This is the Drunk Deer A75 keyboard, a good looking $150 predominantly plastic 75% wired keyboard that has a trick up its sleeve. It uses magnetic switches rather than classic mechanical ones. So when Drunk Deer reached out to offer me pre-release access to the A75, it piqued my interest and I decided to create this video to share my thoughts. That said, as always, what follows will be my best attempt at an honest review pointing out both the things I like and don't like about this keyboard. And of course, the company had no input. So let's get started. At first look, the Drunk Deer A75 seems like a pretty standard 75% keyboard. It has a textured all plastic case with minimal branding, a single USB-C port on the back to connect your computer with a 1000 Hz polling rate, and kickstand legs that increase your typing incline from six degrees to 10 degrees. The keyboard measures in at 355 millimeters wide, 140 millimeters deep, and 34 to 44 millimeters tall, moving from front to back. Again, pretty standard dimensions for a high profile 75% keyboard, which is good because you should be able to find a matching palm rest with reasonable ease. It's also quite light, weighing in at only 715 grams, since the wired only connection means there's no battery or Bluetooth on board. The default keycaps of the A75 are a familiar OEM profile with sharp concave scoops moving from left to right and are constructed with ABS plastic. The black version that I opted for has dark gray keys and shine through lettering, which is biased towards the top of the keycaps to match the north facing LEDs on the PCB. This is a good thing because the RGB is quite nice on the A75, offering 18 predefined effects, plenty of brightness, as well as seven predefined colors to match your taste. And the company executed the color effects toggle properly, allowing you to use the left and right arrow keys to move forward and back through the effects in case you overshoot the one that you're looking for. The lettering on the keycaps is fairly uniform, but some of the icons could be a little crisper, though this is mostly noticeable on the function row. It's also worth noting that the ABS holds onto your finger oils and the dye sublimated printing process would fade faster than a double shot process. Though these are common trade-offs for shine through keycaps. That said, the keys use standard MX stems, so it shouldn't be difficult to find alternative caps if you want something different. Aside from the color accented shift and enter keys, the main standout on the face of the A75 is this gun steel colored aluminum knob which has a nice chamfered top edge and knurled finish, giving it a comfortable feel whether you're scrolling the volume up and down or clicking it to play pause your music. Really though, the star of the Drunk Deer A75 keyboard is the switch. Rather than opting for standard mechanical switches, which force two small metal contacts together to complete a circuit when registering your keystrokes, this keyboard uses Hall Effect switches, which are much simpler and offer some pretty cool benefits. While the switches still use the standard casing, stem, and spring, there's a small magnet contained in the base of the stem which moves up and down with your keystroke. This is paired with a Hall Effect sensor on the PCB that detects the strength of the approaching magnetic field, which it translates into a key press. Like optical switches, this method reduces the number of contact points within the keyboard, improving the longevity, but this magnetic system is unique because the magnetic field strength isn't just a digital on-off system. Each key is now an analog sensor that can detect how far the key is pressed. This has two immediate benefits. First, by pressing the function 2 key and the number keys, you can modify the actuation point of your keystroke between 0.4 and 3.6 millimeters, effectively tuning the sensitivity to your liking. This applies uniformly across the whole keyboard, but it can also be set up on a per key basis using the company's proprietary Antler software, which is also home to the basic customization features like key mapping, RGB settings, and macros. So if you want to tune some keys to be highly sensitive, for gaming movements perhaps, this can be done in software. Here, you can also set two actuation points for the same key, one higher and one lower so that you can have a single key responsible for two tasks. You do this by enabling the second actuation point under the sensitivity menu, 
then mapping each action to the default and default to layers within the keyboard remapping section of the software. Just make sure to click save after each change. I haven't totally figured out how I'll use this yet because I tend to bottom out keys when typing, but it's a pretty neat capability. For now, Drunk Deer is launching with these linear 35 to 55 gram switches, but they do plan on offering a tactile version in the future as well. And since there's no actual contact between the switch and the PCB, all keys are by default hot swappable, so more options are likely on the horizon. Opening the keyboard up by separating the top case from the tray's internal latches, we see that there's a thin layer of case foam pre-installed, as well as some EVA foam sandwiched between the minimalistic PCB and the aluminum plate. Otherwise, there's very little going on with a simple two-peg mounting system supported by a rather hollow case back. While it's nice that they've included some foam, I'm not convinced it's sufficient but here's a quick audio sample of how the A75 sounds in its default configuration. To my ear, this is rather loud and there's a good deal of ping coming from the aluminum plate and reverberating around that empty case back. So I decided to make a few modifications. To start, it's worth noting that modifying your keyboard may void your warranty, so do so at your own risk. In terms of supplies, you'll need a roll of light adhesive tape, something that can be peeled off easily in case you choose to make changes in the future, as well as a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife of some kind, and the packaging materials that came within the keyboard box. That's right, I'm aiming for a low cost scavengers modification. The first thing I did was set aside the bottom case foam, then apply a single, roughly one centimeter wide layer of painter's tape folding over the top edge of the base on either side of the locking hooks to act as a small force break. Following this, I took the thicker packaging foam from the keyboard's shipping box and cut off small pieces until each of the rectangular voids in the top half of the case tray was filled. It's important not to fill these sections above the plastic ribs that protrude upward, otherwise the keyboard case will bulge when closed. For the lower section of the case, I used the tray foam we removed as a template and cut a similar size rectangle from the thin packaging foam which I then folded in half and tucked in place. This provides some acoustic damping for the lower section while remaining soft enough to allow the PCB to fall into place. Moving to the PCB assembly, I applied a simple three layer Tempest tape mod to the backside. This is pretty straightforward because the magnetic switches don't require pin connectors, so the PCB is more or less flat. Simply cut the tape to length, then apply evenly and use an Allen key to puncture the tape where the case standoff holes are. Finally, I used the bottom case foam to cut another rectangle from the thin packaging foam included with the keyboard and used this in place of the case foam, cutting two small slits for the base standoffs to slot through. Then you just need to be careful to ensure that the standoffs align properly and fall right through the PCB so that you can snap the case shut without bulging. As a little bonus, if you have some spare silicon cabinet bumpers lying around, I cut one and placed it on either side of the spacebar switch to further dampen the spacebar sound. And here's the result. much better in my opinion. One thing that is currently missing from the Drunk Deer A75 is the ability to remap the functionality of the knob using their software. Currently, it doesn't appear as an option and is locked to volume control and play pause regardless of whether you're using the function buttons, 
so there's a lot of potential to make it even more useful than it currently is. I'm optimistic that this can be sorted out using a combination of software and firmware updates in the future, as I'm working with a pre-release keyboard, and I know that the company is working on software updates, including a macOS compatible version, as it's currently only available for Windows. All things considered though, if you're up for the basic modifications that I described, the A75 keyboard is pretty neat. Its predominantly plastic construction isn't the highest quality build that you can find in this price range, but there are very few companies currently offering magnetic Hall effect switches and the neat customization opportunities that they provide. So if that level of extra keystroke control is something you're looking for, it's worth checking out the link that I'll leave in the description below. Drunk Deer has also been nice enough to offer my viewers a 30% discount using my affiliate link and the code Jake Reeves at checkout, so make sure to take full advantage of that. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.